Bob Wilhelm. Yeah. Are you ready for your close up? Yeah, but why'd you pull me over on the side of the road here? I think you were impressed. I think you were speeding. I think you, you were show me your ID? I think you were impressed with this uh, hunk for Israel. I'll tell you when we, and this week's parsha, it's directly connected to this week's parsha. What? Francian? What? Achechem Yaitzam Lamachamba, when B'nai God and B'nai Reuben wanted to be uh, in the other side of the yard, Moshe Rabbeinu says to them, Your brothers are fighting a war, and you want to have some uh, some uh, beautiful land here? Vi pastis. Your brothers are going to go fight in war, you have to participate with them. So when you see uh, people, when you know the Maimon and Matzev and Eretz Yisrael, we all have to feel for them as much as we could, even though we're in a, a luxurious America. But remember, there's things that we could do to make them more successful and more safe in their lives. And maybe she should give them a, uh, a great I spirit. Tira, I didn't feel a right. Feeling. Now, we're in, the, we're in the three weeks between uh, Shiva Sputamos and, uh, and Tishabov. I saw that the Tvera Shlaima says, Ravloch Sheves Be'emech She interprets, Ravloch, how great are the, the Shabbosim that are Be'emech Abacha, that are in, in amongst the times of crying. These Shabbosim are very, very special, and we should really take take it to heart and, and do do more, do greater to help the Maimon Matzev and bring Mashiach. And when, wow, you're directing traffic here. Now, I will tell you, every time it comes to this, if you go any further though, you'll hear the buses. Uh, I will tell you, every time it's in the three weeks, anybody who merited or is old enough to have been around when the Rebbe uh, and had this chus to see the Rebbe, it's amazing what sticks to your head and you remember how the Rebbe really, really cried for Mashiach. The, Re the Rebbe really, really cried for the Beis HaMikdash. I'm right here. He really, really cried for the Beis For him, he really wanted it. And uh, and you see this in this week's parsha also. By the Ari Miklot, this week's parsha talks about the Ari Miklot, and Chazal tell us a very fascinating thing that the mothers of the Kayan, Kayan and Gedolim would bake cookies and cakes and give nice uh, kapatas to the to the ones who are stuck in the Ari Miklat who killed Bishoyge. Why would they do that? And the answer is because they, they are stuck there till the Kayan and Gedolim pass away. So they didn't want them to pray, to daven for the, their sons to pass away. So it would make them cookies and cakes and, and garments. So the Mepharshim asked, come on, are you worried about them praying? We're talking about killers. And the answer is yes. Even killers, when they dive in, they have they, they have a pull. So how would a cookie or cake make a difference? The answer the answer is in Farshim give when they're stuck there and they're crying out to Hashem and it, it from the depth of the heart. Even a reitzayach, his tefillah will be accepted. When you're giving them cookies and cake and they're having a good time, sometimes when they're davening, they're davening. They don't really mean it. So. The, so the mother said, you know what, you're going to daven? I can't stop you from davening, but at least I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll make your life more comfortable there so your davening won't be so so be'emes. And love davker, maybe maybe uh, Hashem will not respond to your request that the Kohen Gadol should die. That's a beautiful thought. So when you think about Mashiach, you really have to think about it be'emes and the Beis Hamikdash and all these beautiful things that we're, we're thinking about during this time. Now I will tell you, that there is two things in this week's parsha that you find opposites. You find in the beginning of the parsha it says, "Vayichtov Moshe smoitzei et meitzah am lemaseyem," and then later it says, "Ve'elam maseyem lemoitzei am." Why the switch of words? And the difference is when you're leaving Mitzrayim and going to Eretz Yisrael, there are two motivations. What's making you go? For Moshe Rabbeinu, the motivation was the ultimate goal. I don't care where I came from. I don't know where I left. I don't know where I am now. I want to get to Eretz Yisrael. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, Vayichdev Moshe es moitza eem limaseem. How much closer am I getting to Eretz Yisrael? The Yidden were so sunk into Klippas Eres Mitzrayim. For them is, Oyvei, let's get further and further away from Mitzrayim. And they weren't, uh, the further, it's good enough to away from Mitzrayim. So the Pasuk says, by, by the Yidden's way of approach was, how, how much further am I getting away from the bad? Maishu Rabbeinu says that's not enough. Until you hit it the promised land, uh, that's not good enough. So Maishu Rabbeinu says, Wait till we get to the promised land. 
That's all worrying and thinking about Mashiach, thinking about the Beis Hamikdash. And I'm going to leave you with one last question. There are two words in this parsha that the Targum, the Pasuk says twice in different places. And one place the Targum translates it one way, and the other place, the, tar, the second place, the Targum doesn't translate it. Amongst the cities that Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruben were involved with, there are two cities. Atodos v'divoyim v'yazer. Check it out in the Targum. In one place, the Targum says, Michlauta umalbashta. And the second time the, the Pasuk is quoted, it, it says, Atodos, Atodos v'divoyim v'yazer. Make up your mind. What's the real translation? And whoever gets the answer to this question gets a special surprise gift. <laughs> Hung for Israel. <laughs>